So, all right. Um, so, what we saw in um, in the previous presentation is is John uh, showing us the components of an embedded system. Uh, what he drew your attention to was that the at the at the core of a embedded system is the brains, which is the processor. So, when we talk about a processor design, we are primarily looking at what instructions it supports and how do you program it. So commonly we talk about the processor in terms of its instruction set architecture. So the instruction set architecture is a standard. For example, uh, the instruction set architecture can draw an, uh, an analogy to cars. When we sit in a car, we know that a car has to have a steering wheel. We know that the brakes and the, uh, and the accelerator pedal are always going to be in the same place. Um, the indicator lights are on, on one side of the steering column and so on. So that is the standard for a car. So uh, as far as instruction set architectures are concerned, they have to address the following things. The first thing that an instruction set architecture has to address is what are the set of operations supported? So instructions. So these are the set of operations. For example, um, they, we will see that uh, on, on these on most of the machines that we look at, there are a set of operations like add, multiply, and um, and uh, move things from memory to uh, to the processor and so on. The second thing that any ISA has to talk about is data types. That is, the data we work on can be either a simple character data type or an integer data type or even a floating point data type. The third thing that an instruction set architecture will talk about is the registers. That is, these are the placeholders for our working data and the registers, the when we talk about registers, we say how many there are, what is the size of each register, and what purpose they serve. So we have general purpose registers, and we may have some special registers. If you're programming in assembly, one other thing that you really want to focus on is addressing modes. Addressing mode is refers to the different ways we can fetch op operands from memory or from registers or from instructions. So this is uh, how answers the question how data is formed. And the last thing that the ISA will talk about is memory access. This refers to how, how what, what is the size of an entity that you can fetch from memory, uh, are there different sizes of memories, uh, memory uh, chunks you can get, and, and, uh, and if there's a difference between getting it from the RAM or from the ROM. So to give you an idea, John already talked about some example ISA. So here are some popular ISAs. For most people, the most common ISA that comes to mind is the x86. The x86 is an ISA that is used extensively in desktop and laptop computers. Though the desktop computer is much more popular, what we see is the ARM processor, ARM ISA, is the one that's more popular these days simply because of the sheer number of mobile devices, phones, for example. There's another ISA that's very popular, which is the PowerPC ISA, which is 
used extensively in the automobile industry. Now there are some other ISAs that are out there that have uh, that have some use uh, and and they have specific use. For example, the Spark ISA is used on uh, the Sun Microsystem devices, and these are typically in the server on the server machines. So now that we understand what an ISA involves. So first we're going to look at the some important components. We'll look at our, uh, to start with, we'll look at registers. So to start with, we will look at registers. We will focus on the ARM ISA. And what we realize on the ARM ISA is there are registers which are our general purpose registers I'm just going to call them G GP general purpose registers and there are these are registers R0 R1 all the way up to R12 these 12 registers are used uh, like scratch pads where we store temporary information and we manipulate this information through performing arithmetic, moving operations, logic operations, data uh, manipulation operations. All these registers are of length 32 bits. So they can hold 32 bits of information. Now, the second class of registers are special registers, the first of which is there are three special registers on the ARM. The first of which is the R13 register, which is our stack pointer. In other words, it holds the address of the top of the stack. Now we will see the functioning of the stack later but suffice it to say stack is a region of memory that has special importance and so we dedicate a register to point to the special area of memory. The second register, special register is R14 which is the link register which holds the return address for subroutines. Again, one of the things that we will learn in this class is to write code that is modular and modular code involves writing subroutines. And so we dedicate a register to hold the return address of a subroutine. The third register, special register is R15 and this is by far the most important register which is the program counter. I say it's the most important register is because it always is the, is the marker of where you are in your code. So it holds the address of the next instruction to execute, to run or to execute. In addition to these general purpose registers and special registers, there is a, there's a register which is called the processor status register, the PSR. We will not worry about the contents of this register except for four bits of its significance to us, which are the N, the Z, the V, and the C bits. So these four bits together will tell you the status of the system. 
What we mean by the status of the system is these are status indicators that will tell us what the most the result of the most recent operation performed. So that's the result of the the most recent operation performed. Now by being on and off they tell us whether the most recent operation that was performed was resulted in a negative result that is the result was negative or the result was a zero that is I just performed an operation and the result of the operation was a zero or the result caused an overflow in fact both V and C indicate overflows except that the V indicates an overflow when we're working with with sign numbers and the C indicates an overflow with unsigned numbers.